Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about the range of values for which our binomial expansion is valid for. And for this, it's probably going to be worth knowing how this formula works, or at least having seen it before. So if you haven't, I'll link my videos I've made on that in the description. As well as that, I'm going to timestamp the different parts of the video, so if you're more interested in just seeing exam questions, you can skip through to them. So we'll start off by talking about what do we mean by the range of values for which our expansion is valid, right? And so if we take a look at this formula, the one in the red box, as part of it, it says it's only valid if the modulus, or the absolute value of x, is strictly less than 1. And so by that, we mean that x has to be between, well, it has to be strictly greater than negative 1 and strictly less than positive 1. That's what we mean by this modulus of x being less than 1. It's the same thing. And I talk about why that is in my previous video. And so basically, sometimes your question won't be of such a nice form, so it might not be of the form 1 plus x all to the power of m, and so we're going to have to change the range of values of x that it's valid for, for the formula to work, okay? And so I'm going to work through some different exam questions, or different questions, so then you'll get a feel for how this is going to work. So we'll start off with the first one, and it says, for which values of x is the expansion of 1 over 1 plus 2x all squared valid? And so the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this, and I'm going to write it like this, 1 plus 2x to the power of negative 2. And the reason I've done that is because now this is in the same form as what we're given in our formula. But let's see what the differences are, right? So rather than 1 plus x, we've got 1 plus 2x. And so all that means for our range of values, or for this modulus over here, the difference is, well, rather than there being an x in here, inside our absolute value or inside our modulus, we're going to write 2x, okay? And so now I'm going to say that, well, we have the absolute value of 2x being strictly less than 1. And this is actually really easy to rearrange because the absolute value of 2x is the same, okay? That implies it's the same as two lots of the absolute value of x being less than 1. And so from here, we can divide both sides by 2. And so we get, well, our range of values for which x is valid is the modulus of x being strictly less than one half. Okay, so that's how we would answer that question. Let's now take a look at a second one that's very similar. So it says, for which values of x is the expansion of 1 over 1 plus 3x cubed valid? And so we're going to rewrite it again, so it's 1 plus 3x to the power of negative 3. And very similar to the last example, rather than there being an x, we have 3x. And so I'm going to write this 3x inside my modulus. So we're going to say that, well, the absolute value of 3x is strictly less than 1. By the same logic, I can pull out the 3 from the absolute value, and we get that 3 times the absolute value of x is less than 1, which implies that the absolute value of x has to be strictly less than 1 third. Okay, so that's the range of values for which x is valid. Let's look at a third example, okay? And this one says, for which values of x is, uh, is the expansion of 1 over 1 minus 2x all cubed valid? So again, I'm going to rewrite it. I mean, when you get used to it, you don't actually have to rewrite it every time, but it's just a habit. So 1 minus 2x to the power of negative 3. So now you'll notice that rather than a plus x, we've got a minus 2x. And so as you can probably guess, in our modular signs, I'm going to write negative 2x, like this is strictly less than 1. And so now this implies that, well, in the modulus, negatives turn into positives, don't they? So this is now the same as 2x being strictly less than 1 like that, same thing. Now I can pull the 2 out to the front of the modulus. So we've got two lots of the absolute value of x is less than 1. And like before, we can divide both sides by 2, and we get an answer that the absolute value of x is strictly less than 1 half. And that is our range of values. Now we're going to look at one final example, which is probably the trickiest case you'd see. And it says, for which values of x is the expansion of 1 over 2 plus 2x all cubed valid? So again, I'm going to rewrite it. So we've got 2 plus 2x to the power of negative 3. But remember, in our formula, it's 1 plus x to the power of n. And here we've got a 2. So we're firstly going to have to get rid of that. And the way we're going to do that is factorize out the 2. Okay. So I'm going to say that, well, this is the same as 2 multiplied by, well, what do I multiply by 2 to get to 2? 1 times 2 is 2. And what do I have to multiply by 2 to get to 2x? Well, that's easy as well. That's just 1x, so plus x, like that. And that's all to the power of negative 3. We can now distribute the power. So we've got 2 to the power of negative 3 multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of negative 3, like that. So now we can do what we've been doing in our previous examples, and we've got something of the form 1 plus x. And so we just put the x into our absolute value, and we get the modulus of x has to be strictly less than 1. 
and that is our range of values. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share this video uh, and go over to my channel for tons more maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.